Jordan Jewett, how are you? Hello, how are things? Yeah, no, yeah. Um, good on this end to you. Yeah, really well. Yeah, appreciate you coming on again. All right, so, I'm glad uh, I didn't bite it back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really kind of you. And, um, you know, like before, you do accountancy for the tradespeople. And, um, you know, I come across you and you, you were just brilliant to talk to. And you, you felt like you immediately understood what my business was all about and, you know, how useless we are in our accounts out. Um, so today's, today's topic is about, you know, you've been going a while, it's getting sort of busier, um, you're perhaps struggling a little bit, you need extra staff, um, looking at maybe taking somebody on. And you're going to speak to us about, about it from an accountancy point of view and a money point of view. Um, because sometimes I've done it in the past where I'll take on extra members and um, you look at your accounts at year end, you, you're like, oh, it didn't work out quite so well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my yeah. bottom line was kind of not too dissimilar to what it was yeah. when I was on my own. So, yeah, appreciate you coming in and talking right. to us about it. Yeah, it, there's there's a lot to think about and plan for when you when you when you're looking at looking at recruiting. It's it, it is quite a it's quite a risky area. I, w- I would say taking on your first member staff is always the hardest. If if you're up to three or four, taking on an extra body isn't as scary. But the f- first member of staff is is the big one. That's the one that it can make or break you quite quite quickly. So trying to or, or obviously with the amount of businesses I've seen and the amount of uh, accounts I've worked through with people that people say, right, how, how has it worked taking somebody on? How does that then affect your profit? The, the first thing to say is, and most people don't like to hear this, is you will lose money at the, at the start by recruiting. Could, the, way to, the way to think about it is if you, if being, maybe it's been generous to some people here, but if you're doing 40 hours, 40 hours a week. Um, 40 hours? <laughs> If you're doing 30 hours a week, if you're doing 40 hours a week, say, for you to have enough work for two full-time staff, you kind of go, well, I need 80 hours, but it's impossible for you to jump from 40 to 80. What you need to do is go, well, I end up taking on too much work and I might be doing 50, 55, 60 hours myself. Now I can afford to take somebody on and and reduce the amount of work, but there's still this gap of of how much hours and how much work you've got to do. So it... It, when when you take somebody on, you've got to be you've got to be planned well ahead to make sure you've got that cash buffer to go. I know it's going to be a tough tough couple of months until we make it clear to new customers that that we're actually taking on more work and we start potentially advertising a bit more. You've kind of got to do a lot of things in one go to be able to bring more work in to be able to to be able to justify it. Um, the okay, business, it, like, it, you know, like you say, it may feel like oh, you're working loads and weekends, and it's got to change. But you're not working eighty hours, the equivalent of two people. And to get to that next stage, obviously, um, you got to get someone else, and you've got to get them working the way you want to work. But then you may have to invest in marketing and. Yeah. you know all that all other stuff that relates to it as well there's, there's a lot of knock-on effects it's not as, oh, we'll take somebody else on and then we'll take more work on it well actually we need to, we almost need to get prepared and get everything ready and lined up to be able to, to take them on and one of one of the ways that we we've well, with, with a lot of my, my clients and it, it's quite common in this this industry anyway is rather than trying to take some uh, either somebody time served on um who's obviously going to cost a lot more money um but trying to go down the route of being able to employ an apprentice. So with the apprenticeship wage at the minute, and they are getting higher, so it used to be a lot lower than what it is at the minute, but the apprenticeship wage gives you a bit more room to go, well, actually, I don't need to take on 80 hours worth of work and just get an extra pair of hands, get somebody else to be able to train. But again, it's not a, it's not an instant fix. It's if, if you're working 60 hours and you're going, I'm ready, ready for, for a staff member, taking on an apprentice doesn't change that. If anything, it might make it worse because now you need to be able to train them and actually spend the time with them. Because if you don't invest in training an apprentice, they're never going to be able to take take that pressure off and take take some of that workload off. So it's mm-hmm. it, you've got to think long term, but the the financial part of it makes it more sensible to be able to take on a, on an apprentice because you've then got that cut rate cut rate salary. Whilst they obviously get get upskilled to it to a point where they can do at least at least do something rather than rather than go around sweeping up after you. Um, yeah, I reckon, that, like you say. I guess the problem is finding an apprentice. So that's, you know, another, another topic, but 
I reckon you could fairly quickly get them to a stage where they're prepping to a reasonable standard. Yeah. Especially now if, if you've got like a Merca um, dust free sort of setup, you know, the machine does most yeah. of it for you, you know, you, you're not doing it manually. Um, so then you can kind of get that person set up at a job, yeah. perhaps after a few months, get them prepping, yeah. you can be on another job. So like you say, it's a bit more messing around, yeah. but it should pay off as long as they stick around. Um, that, so it, 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 you hit the nail on the head there. It's, it's finding the right person. And mm. every tradesman I talk to has had bad experiences and good experiences with, with, with apprentices. And unfortunately it can be one of those things where you need to burn through a few apprentices to get one that's that's good and i, I think that I've, I've got uh, one of my joiner joiner clients in particular i think he's on his third apprentice now and he's lovely bloke. not he, I, i'm well aware that it's not him that's the problem <laughs> but by the time he's getting the third one it's right like, it's clicked it's not that's right and it, it now able to start taking work off him but he's kind of had to go through pain for six six months having having multiple apprentices if i if we're being honest to stay away from taking on a friend of the family because that tends to be the oh well, i know him he's a good kid i'll take him on it makes it so much more difficult when they don't work out and you put pressure on family relationships and it's it, it's one it's one of those things where you trying to recruit somebody that you don't know just means that it's a business decision if it's not working out rather yeah. than the amount of the amount of people i spoke of i've taken on an apprentice but they're useless but i can't get rid of them as my best mate's son for yeah. example i can't i can't get rid of them. i can't do anything and it's like well when does that end are you going to employ them for the next 10 years not being able yeah. to do the job whereas yeah. having having somebody external or somebody not not related it, it can it can be a more sensible way because then if it does go wrong which it, it can happen and it is business at the end of the day at least you make that decision to go it's not working out good luck but you're not the right fit whereas friend of the family it can be dangerous i guess that's the point and it? it's like people can i can understand it be put off so you invest time in the apprentice maybe they're no good maybe you train them up for a year and they're good and then they leave but not everybody wants to work for themselves and they like being employed so i guess the point is it's just keep going at it because yeah. if you can get it right and you get into a good standard and they're like replicate as good as what you are. And then you get the next one and build it and build it and build it. And then eventually you can start doing four day weeks and take the Friday off to do all the quotes, oh, you know, time. actually run the business rather than being in a business. As such. But it takes, it takes time and a bit of patience. Yes, discipline as well. Cause it's, it's, it's the thinking ahead as well. And you, you kind of, what what happens with some of my clients are trying to grow quite aggressively uh, to to be able to recruit and take take on more work so what ends up happening you'll take somebody on and you maybe a year year and a half in going great this is working out this is working out really well we've now we've now double turnover but obviously they're taking less money out of the business and you great you make more you make more money at that point well whereas what you need to be then starting to do is go well if i want to continue to grow can't just sit on my laurels now and wait I need to then be going I now need another apprentice so they can start training and, and start gradually working the way through it's very much it, I don't want to make it sound like a conveyor belt because it, it's not it, people at the end of the day and we need to look look after them but mm. trying to then forward plan enough to be able to get that progression and get that that's when it starts opening up the, the exciting bit of going right now I'm running the business yeah. rather than doing all the work and that's the that that's the kind of thing that it, it not, it's not for everyone. Don't, don't get us wrong. You, some people are just happy doing doing their work and doing the job, and that that's not wrong. Mm. But if you are wanting to go. You've got to make sure you get yourself in the mindset to be able to go. Right, I need, I need to know where the business is going and plan that next step. And plan what comes after that. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's 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 an ongoing process to to keep to keep it keep it moving forward. Yeah. So let me give you a scenario, um, which has happened to me and many other. Uh, painters so you're getting busy and then you you call around no good decorator and you get one that's kind of not working for himself and you yeah. sub it out so say for example i just to round it up i'm on 200 a day yeah you get the subby rocks up um it's got no van it's got no materials or he, he, you know he might have a car he rocks up in a car and not dissing a car no a lot of people work out a car but he wants say <laughs> yeah. 150 yeah um now, as an accountant, we've got to run it. We can talk about CIS in another chat, but it's got to be CIS, hasn't it? Yeah. So you've got to run it via CIS. 
Yeah. So you've got potentially more accountancy fees, more admin. You do. And in CIS isn't particularly cheap as well. So having yeah. having an employee on the payroll, um, just, just for context, if you were to have a monthly payroll, we charge in the region of like a tenner a month. We're not talking huge amount. Whereas when you start getting a CIS return, you've you've got a lot more administration and that's when you've up to maybe an extra 30 to 40 quid a month for doing one person cis return which is yeah. like that's a lot to be a lot of costs to be bearing in but yeah i think the, the difficulty with quoting daily charge out rates for for example there's that much regional variance like i'm from a working class town in uh in the north east called concert which is it it's more of a rundown area. So the, the charge out rate for a day here compared to go to any sort of bigger city, you're talking world, world, worlds apart. So it's, it's quite hard to, what, what would say, rather than just looking at the that rate, I think trying to make sure there's enough meat in the job that you're working on. Subcontractors really, you want, the way you want to be using subcontractors is for certain jobs. It's not a, if you're, if you're taking a subcontractor on, right, I've got them five days a week working for us and I'll make sure I fill time. I tend, from an accounts point of view, you tend to make less money doing doing that because, excuse me, you basically guaranteed to have to find their find their work whilst you're already busy doing other things. Whereas if you've got a, for example, a, a large job, and I know I've, I've been on in, in the Facebook groups, I've, I've seen people talking about, for example, doing work on a school, for example, where you go and write that's a three four week long job, yeah. but I've then got to delay all my other private customers by another month because I, I know I don't have enough time where subcontractors are really good is going right that four week job let's get that done in two weeks so that I can keep all my all my normal residential customers happy that that, that, my, that my usual work but being able to go well actually I've got enough profit in that job um for me to do it four weeks right it, as long as we can bring that forward and get somebody in for the two weeks to be able to do that with us fly through it and then get onto more work which wins you more work yeah money. that makes a, sense, sense because it. yeah in the past I'd have a few guys and like you say, if you're almost employing them, you know, yeah. so you're like any given week, you're like, oh, I'll, I'll get, get them on, you know, get them doing, you know, horse stairs and landing or whatever. Yeah. And then I might just do a bedroom perhaps, you know, and then it's kind of like, I guess what I'm saying is, unless you're, you're in a job and you know, you've got the profit in and you're saying, right, you're almost dictating, right, I've got you for five days. Here's what I'm going to pay you. Here's what we've got to achieve. Yeah. If you let it go on a kind of day rate, and then don't work to your same standard, you get callbacks, it overruns. 50 quid is just no margin for any kind of profit at all, is it? It's almost not I, worth it. I know. And it, there's, there's ways you can, the way, there's ways you can mitigate that by looking at going, well, if we're charging 200 pound a day, for example, yes, having that in there, but if we know we're taking on subcontractors, making sure, yes, we work it out based on materials, so, but then adding something on the top just to make sure that we're not going to leave ourselves short. Obviously, like with anything, though, the more expensive you become, the more risk you are of losing the job. So there's always going to be a fine line between just putting your prices up and actually getting getting work through the door. So it's not always as as sort of clear clear cut but yeah it's it, it's running those numbers first and no and having a plan at the start of the job um to be able to take on take on the sub the subcontractor to help help with it mm. yeah and but, that's the problem as well isn't it come year end your gross if there's two of you or a third or fourth or whatever then you start getting into vat but and that's that was the the big other consideration so if you if let, let me just very quickly do so. Do, so if I said two hundred pound a day, what's the, so three times by five days a week for fifty two weeks a year? Obviously, we're not going to be working fifty yeah. five days, fifty two. But to give a bit of room for error, fifty two grand is what we're what we're talking talking about talking about there. But you've then got your materials on top that you end up charging customers. So you, you by the time you add another 10, 15 grand, usually you'd be sat at about 60, 65 grand, making making some some decent money out of that. If you take on another person, the ideal goal is to be able to double your turnover to be able to make more more money. But if we're going from sixty five up to one hundred and thirty grand straight away, you've absolutely smashed the VAT threshold. So what you've then done is actually made potentially made yourself less margin on the jobs, or you've got to start putting your prices up by another, not necessarily a full twenty percent, but putting your prices up enough to be able to cover that to get the same amount of money. So taking on a, a, an employee is almost forcing you to go down the VAT registration route because you, 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 you've got no choice. If, you, if you're already making 60 grand and you're only making an extra 20 grand to keep you under the 80, 85 mark, well, 
20 grand is what we're going to be paying somebody is a minimum anyway once they're on a, on a minimum wage whether that's an apprentice or not it's a minimum wage next year is 19 19 grand give or take so you're already going well taking on an employee you yeah. have to be going that registered is is almost the consideration yeah. which is it's see, that's see, this when is, and losing money quickly yeah see this is a big problem now isn't isn't it jordan in the sense yes you can change your mindset and plumbers mm. electricians they all charge vat of course they do you know and it you know people listening will be like that's pretty scary actually even yeah. just taking one person on the chances are could go vat yeah what's the answer if you do mrs smith wants a bedroom doing you know it's 400 quid plus vat or she goes one man band um who does you know some sneaky cash jobs and not saying you not saying my brush wizards do of, of course yeah. not but say <laughs> um you know he's on more of a yeah sensible amount without VAT what what's yeah. the answer to it you right know, how, how do you get how do you get to that next level yeah it, it so what I always say to people the probably the mo if you're only looking at it from a I don't want to sound too much like an accountant here. So if you're only looking at a, a bottom line, so how much money you make in the, in the year. So 80 grand is probably the best you're ever going to make in terms of a percentage. What, what I mean by that is if your turnover was 80 grand, you would, in this industry, you would hope, you, depending on what materials you're buying, somewhere in the region of 60, 65 grand's worth of profit, profit on that. It is, it is obviously mostly tight. But if, if if you then go to 90 grand, that 60 to 65 grand profit can easily drop down closer to more like 50 grand. It's a bit complicated to get your head around, but what we'd be doing is going, well, if we're only able to charge 90 grand and we don't put our prices up, you're going to make less money than you've, you've ever made, well, not that you've ever made, but you're going to make less money. So the, the option isn't to go from 80 to 90 or even to 100. If you want to grow, you have to go from 80 up to 130 to start making the same sorts of money again. So it's it's one of those where my a lot of my, a lot of the time my advice is well, how much do you want to grow the business and how much work do you want to take on? Do you want to to turn it into a proper business? In which case, yes, fine, let's let's work out right what's it gonna cost us and how much do we then need to put prices up and and trying to make ourselves um, more of a more of a formal business, if that makes sense, rather than a one man band business and trying to t turn yourself into a bit more of a, like we are a business and therefore we demand a higher price because of we're doing X, Y, and Z and we're professional. And I appreciate everybody is anyway. It's yeah. more of a how you convey yourself, which I think tradesmen are, are often a bit, it's not, how do I put this delicately? Not always you, you the best. You don't have to be delicate with us, come on. <laughs> <laughs> being that professional person and it, it's, it, it's there's a big difference and i think that usually i say that around the vat side of things of going right we are becoming a proper business now we're going to be trying to grow to four or five staff and i'm going to try and get myself off off the tools i'm going to try and get myself off working and try and focus on just growing it that you've got a lot more time to be able to to be that person that's going out and quoting and giving that professional professional approach so yeah that was a long-winded way of saying no, no, no. Oh, it's, I know it's, it's five grand. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a difficult one to answer because you could talk forever. But I guess the way you got to look at it, say you had five or six guys, you know, you could be set up where you're doing schools, you're doing the bigger projects, um, some commercial stuff where VAT they don't that doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? They, they, they would would expect it. Yeah. And then perhaps you know it's 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 just changing the way your business is. So if you've got running a good business, you all got uniform on, yeah. you all got new vans, you turn up at a job, you know, you're working in perhaps bigger houses, bigger yeah. projects, you know, five bedroom yeah. mansions, totally redecking it, or you've got a team to do it. One man band, you can't do it. You can only yeah. do, but you know, it's very hard to do a whole house by yourself. One man band. Um, you can do it, of course, but it takes a long time. So people have money, you know, I, I do a lot of cabinet painting and, um, you know, handmade um, from this company. And their kitchens are 80 grand, 120 yeah, grand. Yeah. You know, people pay it. People yeah. will pay it. And they've got no problem paying it. Yeah. So it's just, again, that's a, a, a talk for another time. You, I think it's known your value, isn't it? And, and yeah. it race to the bottom, it doesn't doesn't help. So it'd be in, in like when people are trying to negotiate, going, well, I don't want to be paying, paying the VAT. Well, unfortunately tough like that is our our price uh, there's no i'm i'm not gonna kind of sacrifice my standards or rush it or do less work to be able to to be able to get the price down because then i'm not going to be happy with the the job i do and, and i think you 
yeah, I think I think now more than ever because, and I'm not saying cash should is in. I'm not. I mean, as in people are paying card like card or bank transfer more than ever, rather than than just being paying by cash. So what you're going to get more than ever, and I'm not saying it's it's my clients or any any of the brush wizards here, but. I think a lot more businesses are going to have to start that registering because with inflation being 10% of bloody year at the, at the minute, yeah. the, that threshold hasn't went up. And I, I actually don't know, but it hasn't went up in plus five years. I, I would have to check when it actually last went up. So what that means is if, if everything else is going up by 10% a year, actually that turnover threshold's coming down. And then yeah. because of COVID, everybody stopped paying, paying cash. And now it's all, most payments are now electronic. It means that everybody has to do, has to be declaring it and everybody has to be hitting the VAT threshold. So yeah. I think it's a, it's a time, time bomb as such that every small business is going to be VAT registered before long. And I think the, the government is going that way. So it, I'm not really, I'm not really answering the question. Again, no, but, no, you, you are well, right. Cause it's, it's, stuff consider, it? it's stuff to consider, isn't it? Because yeah, it is. you know, when I had a few guys, my, paint and sundries bills would easily be 1500 two grand a month easy yeah. years ago i'm talking years ago i've been doing bits by myself for, for a long time since covid and stuff yeah. um but yeah you know they don't quibble when it's a plumber or electrician and yeah. you know again if you're that registered it shows you you're doing fairly well you've got perhaps one or two you've got a team um you're going to be turning up. You're going to be looking smart. You do you, do you know what I mean? They're, they're going to expect to pay, and you know, Some like we often talk anyway. The, huh? yeah. Some people prefer that that anyway to go. Well, actually, I prefer to be working with that registered business because I know the, they're going to be doing things right, and 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 the accounts decides only one part of it, but is in it's that professional element of it. So, and that that's where as a one man band or potentially one with a little bit of subcontractor work or with one employee it's quite it's quite difficult to be fat registered and then given off that look as well so it it, it is a difficult difficult balance to strike but it, the yeah. best thing is not burying your head in the sand over the fat that is the worst thing you can do uh, the, the the amount of times i've had people people come to us um and say oh my account's been my or previous accounts been doing the work, but I haven't known about the VAT threshold. And it's, you have to keep an eye on how much money is coming in. The, so if, well, I'm just going to very quickly do a, do a calculation. So the way, the way I like to think about it. So if we're saying 85 grand a, a, a year, that breaks down into seven grand a month. So as soon as you say about seven grand go hitting, hitting your bank account from customers in, in any one month, that's when you need to be thinking, right, where am I at for the VAT? And I know a lot of people like the work weekly. So what's that, 16, 1600 quid a week? So but once you start seeing those sorts of figures coming through the bank each, yeah. each week, you need to be thinking about VAT and, and at least talking to your accountant or, or having, having, a, having a look because it doesn't, it, it's weird, it doesn't work on your accounts year. So we're, we're, we were talking last time about self-assessment, so it runs up until the yeah. 31st of March, for example. That, the VAT doesn't run up until the 31st of March. It's, it's like a rule in 12 months. So it's when you close every month, you've got to keep on checking. So oh. you can't just, oh, well, I'll figure it out when I do my accounts at the end of the year, whether that, that's the worst possible thing, because then what you're meant to be doing is then backdating it. And you can't go and charge your customer more. They've already paid. They're happy with the job. Yeah. They've got to do it. You can't go and backdate it. Right. What you need to be doing is, is known when you're going to hit it and then starting to quote at least a month in advance going, I'm going to be that registered by then. So I'm going to start adding my, potentially adding my 20% on to be able to cover the cost yeah. so that you come out with the same money at the end. That's the important bit. You don't want to be, what's the point of doing more work and earning less money? You, yeah. You're better off doing less work and earning, earning more money. It's, that's the, that's yeah. a consideration. And I know you as a company, because we've spoken about it before, you're very proactive in communication with, people that work with you so i guess a lot of people they get to the end of the tax year the accountants you don't hear from them from next year you know only when the um, accounts are due yeah. when they want some fees you know you bung it in and then like, oh you're vat and yeah. you know i guess and they're making your you, fault you communicate like a lot, yeah Huh? Yeah, yeah. They're making your fault, like you didn't know you'd that registered. Yeah, and it's, yeah. we, I guess, I guess it's it's more of our approach to our, our client base. But to, to, and just just to give you a context of of how we work, more so because you can be asking your own account. I'm not saying get in touch to to, uh -huh. that to do it. Other other accountants do work this way. But rather than sitting down once a year with your accountant, that when you're getting close to that fat threshold, that's the last thing you want to be doing. And is a, is a minimum of what we, what we do is we sit down with our clients twice a year. And what that's doing is 
looking at it six months of the way through the year and saying, right, this is where you're at for VAT, for example, or this is where we're at tax wise, halfway through the year. Why don't you go and do X, Y, and Z? Go and buy a new van, go and buy some new tools, go and put some money in your pension, for example. Do X, Y, and Z to either reduce VAT or, uh, sorry, reduce the tax bill or do something differently before it gets to the end of the year. And that's where, when when I've got a client that I know is going to be close to the VAT, I'm not having the conversation with you to go, you passed it nine months ago, that's just, I'm not doing it. We will be doing it right and making sure that you find out in advance. Obviously, there's an extra cost to that because it's more time, it's more, there's more work to do, but it's the right thing and it can save you. The amount of times I've seen people get a 10 grand VAT bill because they, they've missed it for six months and it's just like, where do I go from here? How am I ever meant to pay that? It's just, it, it's, it can cripple a lot of businesses when you miss it. Yeah, definitely. So just to summarize, I know you're busy and you need to go. Um, your top tip being your first person, try and be persistent and get an apprentice and yeah. look to grow it. And then you haven't got a major expense of subbing and um, getting a grief that could potentially come with it. Yeah, that's 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 the best way. And and obviously you've got the, the payable registrations, the pension registration, just pay it. <laughs> pay an accountant to do it don't try and do your payroll yourself as much as people think oh I'll, I'll save a little bit of money just, just pay an accountant to do it because there's so many pitfalls with pensions and auto enrollments and the art oh, yeah, all this type of stuff you don't know it inside out it, just pay it, pay somebody to do do it for you and, it, and it's, it's just an extra cost you've got to bear and and get it done right because it, again it's just you want to avoid avoid as many problems as you can and get the hassle taken off you yeah brilliant children Again, I appreciate your time. I really do, Jordan. All right, as you can tell, I like talking. No, 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 it's brilliant. And it's good to, you know, for me, from a painter, just to, you know, my experience over the last 20 years and um, where I've uh, gone down the ra- wrong road in terms of accountancy stuff. So it really, really good to hear from you. Definitely. Cheers. All right, have a good evening. Take care. Cheers, all. Thanks. Bye-bye.